I'm basically creating three new poly loops, one for the midsection, the whole torso, one for the arms, one for the legs. And now what I'm going to do is in my geometry menu, we're going to do our first pass at DynaMesh. And what you're going to see it do is kind of create new topology, okay? But everything's going to be redistributed and, and fairly dense. It's going to be very nice for sculpting. It's not production uh, type topology. So in your geometry tab toward the middle, you're going to see that DynaMesh little drop down menu. I'm going to expand it. These are all the default settings. I haven't modified anything, and I just want you guys to see what it does first. And notice I have the wireframe on. This is for a reason. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit DynaMesh, and you're going to get this prompt right here. What this is saying, your mesh has subdivision levels. Okay. Would you like to freeze the subdivision levels before entering DynaMesh mode? If you get prompted for that, it's simply reminding you, hey, you want to DynaMesh your model, but you have subdivisions. Essentially, you need to remove them. So at this point, if it's saying, would you like to freeze them, you're just going to say no. Okay. If you don't have subdivisions on your geometry, you won't get this prompt. So if I say no right now, you're going to see that everything just gets completely welded together. And you can see that the distribution of the geometry is really even, but the topology itself is kind of gnarly, right? It's got a bunch of little weird triangles and quads, and it's meant to just be for sculpting. Now, why do I have the, the wireframe on? Because I want to see the density, okay? I don't want it to be too dense, and I also don't want it to be too light because I want to be able to actually do some, some nice sculpting. You can see the active points for this piece is 144,000 points in the scope of ZBrush that's really light. Um, so this would be totally doable. Now, if I undo that, just to go back to this, this slider right here where you see resolution, that's what's defining the density of that uh, DynaMesh. So if I put this really low, for example, let's say like 24, do the same thing, say no, you can see now it's really, really light. Also, look what starts to happen right along the center. It's getting welded together. The lighter you go, the broader, the broader it's going to reach to try to weld things together. So remember when I said I got to take these arms and scoot them up, it's because I want some clearance in areas that I don't want to weld. Okay, so I'm going to undo this. Let me show you the flip side of that coin and what I don't want you to do also. I don't want you to go super dense, then hit DynaMesh, and then end up with something like this. This is way too heavy. You can see this takes me to 2.3 million points, okay? Now, still, ZBrush can handle this, but why is this problematic for you guys? Well, let me just take like clay build up for a, for a second, just to kind of show this. If I go in and start just kind of sculpting in some information, watch what happens when I try to smooth it. It's gonna be very hard to smooth, okay? So the denser we get with DynaMesh, the harder it is to control the forms, I see it time and time again where students will go really heavy with it and then they're wondering why they can't control the surface detail because it's just it gets out of control okay so in a nutshell we want to find the sweet spot okay now it looked like the default value worked for me what defines that for each and every one of us is going to be the scale of our scene some of you might be working without even knowing it smaller global scale than i am some of you might be at a larger one so the numbers will vary here. So if you see me use a certain value, don't just input that and expect the same exact thing. Kind of, you got to mess with it to see what it's doing. Now, all that said, um, why did I make these three poly groups? Because I'm going to use a function in the beginning here, or right next to the DynaMesh button, I'm going to go ahead and turn on this button that says groups. Now, what I'm basically telling DynaMesh there is I want you to weld everything together that's within a poly group. So in other words, the arms won't be welded to the torso just yet. The legs won't be welded to the torso just yet. But all of these, anything that's the same color will be welded together. So if I go ahead and run that, say no, you can see that I still have separation of these pieces here. Now, why is that nice? Because if you still want the liberty to kind of go in and modify that transition, this is really, really helpful to do. You can see I can just move that delt around and really discover exactly how I want that line to find before I weld it all together. Now, if you want to bypass that, you can, okay? If you're feeling really confident of how everything is 
working together, you can bypass this one little step. I only spend just a few minutes at this stage, and then I just automatically turn groups off, redynamesh, and get everything working together. So I'm going to just stick with all this. I'm going to turn groups off, okay? Just let's assume I did a little bit of work with those individual shoulder placement and leg insertion there. So I have this off. Notice that Dynamesh is still on for, uh, for the geometry here. At this point, if I go and just, if I want to read Dynamesh, you simply have to just hold control, click and swipe up the canvas, and it'll just continue redoing that function, all right? Now, why is that cool? It's cool because let's say this is like a really gnarly, you know, character that has some horns coming out of the, the shoulders or something. You know, Sarah could be in here and just start pulling this, redynamesh, pull it, redynamesh, pull it. You know, you could just go on and on and on. It's almost like a super extrude function that just that you can recalculate the mesh. With that in mind, we're going to strategically kind of work at this. So right now, I have this mesh all welded together. Here's the first thing I want you guys to test in terms of whether the resolution is right. Just go over any area that needs a little, um, you know, smoothing, hold shift and just smooth it down. If it's responsive, like you just see it right now, kind of working away really easy, we're in a good place. So now I can go in here, start smoothing out certain areas that got a little pixelated just for like this uh, little cleanup and prep. Now, mind you, that pixelation is also a byproduct of the resolution setting. So the denser we go, the cleaner all this will look, but we want to strategically kind of work our way through this. So now, so I've done some little bit of shape in here, right? If we start to look at the geometry, you can see in some areas it might even start like pinching or, or stretching. Whenever you see that, I have Dynamesh on, hold control, click and swipe up on the canvas and it'll completely just create new topology there for you to work with. Does the topology get denser every time you do that? No, it'll maintain the exact same setting that you have here for your resolution. It'll be exact same thing. If okay. you notice though, that you start adding more information and this is no longer working for you, like you need a little more, then that's where you'll just kind of up it little by little. So like if I make it go up to 200, go ahead and, and redo it, you can see it's getting now denser. That will allow me to, to have more information in there. So I can definitely use this to be a little more detailed. The thing is though, like be mindful of that. I would prefer you keep things a little bit low for the most part in the beginning uh, as you're doing this stuff, just so you can have better control over what needs to be smooth and keep things nice and clean, okay? 